aquatic story is called Travel. The sky gives off the sweet odor of chocolate. I am bathed in a downpour of Nestle chocolate and still thinking of you. I cannot erase the years or your voice from my answering machine. You surround me. On a bridge in Parkdale, where the roaring reef Dundas Street West, the Nestle factory is a fire-breathing dragon. Its chocolate-flavored breath does not disguise the dull call of winter. Rain drips listlessly, and I am anxious to get to the suburbs, to get to work, to where there are trees. I don't like the suburbs usually, as wide open fields, but wide open fields offer a solace of sorts, while the cinder block west end is only ugly. It is better at the paced subway station. Even though everyone fights for the best seat and the first place in line. From the window of the Don Mills 25 bus, the valley opens up like a wound in the rain. I carry you around in the hollow of my chest. Beneath my ribs, you dig little tunnels, hundreds of tunnels, and you won't leave. For every step forward, I take two steps back, always towards you. Your hand grazes my cheek. It is my mother's hand when I was a child. Sometimes it is my mother's hand that I place on my daughter's head. My lip is a balloon. Most of the swelling is inside my mouth. So, while I can't eat, no one notices or asks why. No one knows why I stay with you. Why you're back. Do you remember Georgian Bay in the middle of winter towards the end of Ramadan? I moved through the 16th century, and you were always behind me, following in the Huron longhouse. You make a mask for your face with your brittle anger. You were my husband, yet you squandered yourself here and there, always here and there. If I walked off the bus onto the frozen field, the field would become a lake, its crisp, translucent surface cracking and drawing me in. The bleak caress of snow, your cool hands in a circle around my throat. The apartment is as cold as frozen steel. My limbs sculpt no angels in the sheets. You bring ice into the room.
tears of angels, but your skin is air. And I turn and toss in my bed, legs wrapped around the shadows. The next two pieces are kind of, um, well, this one I wrote, I wrote this piece a couple of years ago before my mother passed away. And then we're going into some other stuff that comes after the passing and um, things that were going on. This is called Valentine's Day. This boy folds his head into walls, bites his own head off, turns the day to tatters. Snow traces wedding lace on window panes, caresses a man who struggles with his foolproof design for suicide. So foolproof that his friends, finding him so, cannot tell how he did it. Third time, a charm. My mother punches buttons on the telephone. Her sister says, don't call, bothering people all the time. But she calls everyone she can think of to call. And strangers, too. Cries on her daughter's voicemail. I'm so unhappy here. She sits alone in a corner by choice, if that's what you can call it these days. And her hands shake all the time. Yet he scowls and says, go home, go back 
to your country where you came from. So I tell, I tell him, yes, I'll go back to the foot of Mount Royal, to the unconditional arms of my mother wrapped around me and my smelling boots. I tell him my mother's black coat against the winter white paysage is always an only home and he should be so lucky.